All right, today I'm going to show you a cheap way to have a multiplayer game. This is the trash tower, the dust bin, the rubbish rack, whatever you want to call it. So what it is is singleton cards, big stack of them. Uh, just the draft chaff, leftovers, junk, bulk rares, uh, what have you. So it's got things like fire breathing, turn into a pumpkin, just random things from any set. Uh, my rubbish tower, because it's small, I put a lot of the uh, junk slivers into it. So probably not enough to see in a game, and I'll show you how that works in a moment. But it's possible. It's possible that they might come up in a game. My friend that introduced me to this uh, concept, his trash tower, he had one of those huge four row long boxes filled with junk like this. And then he had another box twice as big as this filled too. And what he would do is he would take out a big stack of cards, like two or three hundred, at a time and after every round he would set those aside and grab a new stack he did not want to see the same cards um, multiple times in in one game so what you do is have it shuffled so it's relatively randomized and you just pull out a stack everybody draws off this stack you can have a dealer where you go one, two, three, one, two, three, two, here's two for you, here's two for me, uh, up to seven. Decide who's going to go first. And the rules are the trash tower does not have any lands, does not have any cards that search the library does not have any cards that um, would find lands but you can have landfall and here's how to play it so you can see I don't have any lands well how the hell am I going to play what you do is each turn you can take one card play it face down as a land of all basic land types that produces mana of any color. So you just look at your hand and decide what do I really not care? Like this guy. Hmm, maybe he'd be okay. Enders battlefield destroy target creature and run dealt damage is turned. So I'm going to play him as my first land. Uh, you also cannot have any morph creatures because of the memory issues because if you have morph creature it will be face down and even if you have a separate in a separate location if you have lands here creatures here if you have a morph creature here um, it can get very confusing very quickly so this guy what does he have god's willing hmm that could be good okay charm stray sees the spoils additional cost discard a card dragon blood Leapfrog, Leaden Fists, so, and so on. And let's say he takes Leaden Fists, he plays it face down as a land that can produce mana of any color, and he taps it to play Charm Shrey. So, he's got a 1 1 life linker. There's only one copy in the deck, so this extra ability, it doesn't matter, it's relevant. So, he's got that. Then this guy. Inescapable Blaze. Ah, another sliver. All slivers have flanking. Thundering Chariot. First Strike Trample Haste. Crew of only one. Hmm. Four for a 2 2 Cell Sword. Here another ally. And there's multiple allies in, in the box. But since it's unlikely. And there are Planeswalkers in the deck. I've got Junk. Uncommon Planeswalkers, a lot of them from the, uh, oh, what the hell was that? Um, War of the Spark. They had a 
grip of Planeswalker, so I got some and put them in here. Discerning Taste. Look at the top four cards library, one in your hand. Vines of Vastwood. So let's. Let's put the Cell Sword down as it lands that can produce mana of any color. And we'll play the Sidewinder Sliver. So all slivers have flanking. So that's his hand. Turn to my hand. Now, my turn, I draw a card. And you can tell it's an old card from the damage. Let's see what it is. Ah, it's Moonlace. Let's not overthink this. Let's just play the Moonlace face down as a land of any, that can produce men of any color. Um, Blade Instructor, Mentor. Whenever it attacks, put it, put it. Okay, that's pretty good. Moonlit Strider. So I'll tap this. One blue, one green, doesn't matter. I'll play the Walk and Turn. Let's see if I can get all this on camera. I don't have a wide angle lens. <clears throat> so this guy's turn, he untaps, draws a card, double negative, counter up to two target spells. Seize the spoils. Dragon blood. Leapfrog. So an anthem. Okay, he doesn't have any green creatures. Probably will draw them. He gets to scry. It only costs two. So let's put the double negative down as his land for the turn. And just get the Sylvan Anthem out there. So green, green. And he 1-1 one, one lifelink. I've got a 2-1. He's got a 1-1. One, one. So if I were sitting here, I would not attack. Because it doesn't look like it's going to be profitable. So this guy untaps, picks up his hand, draws Celestial Crusader, Flash, Split Second. Other white creatures get plus one, plus one. Well, he's already got a white creature down. So maybe we want to keep this in. And see, this makes you really think. Which of these do I want to play, and which am I willing to sacrifice as a land? Now, if you get something that returns a land to your hand, it will return to your hand, and it will revert to being, because it's changing zones, revert to being whatever card it is. So you don't have to worry about that. In any case, Inescapable Blaze cost six. Let's put that down. And nothing else to cast. But the sliver has flanking. So if it gets blocked, whatever blocks it will get neg one, neg one. And die. So he attacks, let's say, me, from where I'm sitting. I don't block, I take one point of damage. That's his turn. Of course, he could find some vast wooded, but maybe he wants to uh, keep it for other uses. So I untap, draw my card. Oh, Octavi Drake. And Blade Instructor. Bidding over, put a support counter, remove three support counters, create a sapling, sacrifice a sapling. Each creature controls the fungus as it gets plugged. Hmm. It says Menace. So let's lay, say I play Moonlit Strider. So it's Three colors, one white for a one four. <coughs> Excuse me, spirit. I could sacrifice it and give something protection from a color of my choice in the turn. And a soul shift, but let's get that face down. 
and let's play the Octavi Drake. It is a 2-1 flying hasting creature with Echo 3. And I'm going to attack this guy for his audacity in attacking me. I'll attack with both creatures. I'll hit him for 4. He hit me for 1, I hit him for 4. Not quite fair, but it is what it is. There's a lot of glare on there, isn't there? I'll try to push this back. Keeping it visible. <clears throat> is that any better? That's a little bit better. So, that's my turn. This guy untaps, returns to his hand, draws, ovenize. Till in turn, tar creature loses all ability of space. Okay, so this is something good to keep. Seize the spoils. Dragon blood. Leapfrog. Leapfrog is flying as long as you cast the instant sorcery spell this turn. Mmm. Yeah, let's play him face down. Tap three. And let's go ahead and. I don't really want to seize the spoils yet. So let's play Dragon Blood. That could be interesting. And since all of us are tapped out, he's free to attack. So let's say he attacks this guy for one. So he's taken five. He's gained one with the lifelink, so he's a 21. I'm at 19 because I got hit with the damn flanking sliver. And that's his turn. So back to player three. He draws a kite sail apprentice. As long as he's equipped, he gets plus one plus one flying. There is some equipment in there, but it's sparse, sparse. And there's no guarantee he's going to be the one to draw it. So let's play the kite sail apprentice face down as a land they can produce men of any color and let's do discerning taste so it costs three and the graveyard is, is shared everybody shares a graveyard now you can play where everybody has their own graveyards if you want uh, depending on the cards you have and what is going to make the most sense in the games you play um, perhaps you're saying that you put in your trash tower that say your graveyard only deal with uh, things you have so you need to have separate graveyards it'll be something you'll need to think about in uh, constructing your own look at the top for cards in the library put one in your hand and the rest in the graveyard you gain life equal to greatest power among creature cards put in the graveyard this way okay one two three four and no creatures. <laughs> Which one should I put in his hand? Branching bolt. That's pretty good. Hindering light. Mm, doesn't matter. Late to dinner. Okay, return to our creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. So now I'm thinking if I shouldn't have separate graveyards, but maybe it's more fun to have a shared graveyard so anyway let's put branching bolt in his hand discard these the other effect doesn't matter because we saw no creatures and everybody's tapped out so he decides to go at me again I take another one I'm at 17 so I'll start my turn untap Upkeep draw, I get Drifter, Ildal, Shadow. Oh, I have to pay my Echo. It depends on how strict you want to be with the rules. Um, normally, if you're playing this, you're playing this at the pub and you're drinking, so you need a little um, loose when it comes to people forgetting their Echo or uh, some of their triggers. Not to the point where it uh, really becomes a problem but 
cut a brother some slack. So shadow two one, being to sacrifice him was a pay one blue. What do I want to? What don't I really care about? Flying haste, echo, discard a card. Mentor. Whenever it attacks. So let's play the Deep Cavern Imp. And then we'll play Drifter Ildal for one blue. And we'll attack this guy again for four. So he's down to 11. Back over here, untap. Upkeep draw, he gets Gruesome Menagerie. Choose a creature card for mana cost one in your graveyard, then do the same for two and three. Turn those to the. Ooh, ooh, that can be spicy. <clears throat> See, now it's getting kind of hard to decide what's going to be a land, what's not. Uh, additional cost, cast a spell, discard a card. Draw two cards, create a treasure token. I kind of want to do that. Let's see what we get. So let's tap three. We'll seize the spoils to draw two cards and create a treasure, treasure token. And we will discard uh, let's discard protection or a roundabout kill spell. Mm. Let's discard God's Willing, draw two cards, Shapers of Nature, and Shriek Maw. Mm. Put a counter target, remove a counter. Ah, this is getting really, really tough now. Um, I guess for some Menagerie, it would have to be land. So, or you don't have to play land. I can skip my land trigger, my land drop, and keep everything in my hand uh, and keep going that way. So this is the trash tower. That's how to play it. I'll write up some of the rules in the uh, description when I uh, post this video. Uh, let me know what you think. Like I said, this is a cheap way to play. It's all junk. It's all, you know, I mean, you've got some rares or some mythics. But most of it is cast-offs from box openings and booster packs where I got nothing or I just had the extra cards to uh, play with. Discard a card, create a 1-1 colorless liver artifact. Okay, so this works with this liver guy, but I don't know if he'll get it because everybody's drawing off the same pile. But does on bats. Four for three one flyer, glinting creeper, soul snare, sacrifice soul snare, exile. Okay, so that's the new art for soul snare. He who hungers, blade splicer. Yep, because it's not worth any. So, let me know what you think. I'm really curious to see what.